there. It's time for Real Talk, a new program here on Steve Shetler Media. And it's Real Talk with Aaron, Fleming, and Steve. I'm just kind of here. I'm his sidekick. We uh, we welcome into the uh, Steve Shetler Media family, Mr. Aaron Fleming. Aaron, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, Steve. It's awesome to be with you. Uh, Steve and I have been friends for how long has it been? 10 years? At least, yeah. Something like that. I was thinking on my on my way to the studio that Steve and I like to watch Iowa sports together. <laughs> but it's bad news because I can't think of any games that Iowa has actually won when I come over to Steve's man cave. We like to complain about things. But... We, we do. We like to complain about Hawkeye sports, and we like to watch them lose together. <laughs> and occasionally win. But we're, we're good friends, and so... Um, I, uh, I'm a pastor up in Wellman, Iowa, uh, New Life Community Church, and uh, I like sports. I've got a wife and four kids, and two of them are out of the house now. Yeah. Um, my, my oldest is Riley's age, so we kind of have some dad things in common. And uh, I've been thinking about the Berenstain Bears. <laughs> Weird. Uh, <laughs> Guilty as charged. No, I I know probably a lot of you grew up with the Berenstain Bears and you enjoyed the Berenstain Bears as a kid. The the stories were funny. Yeah. Um, But I got to thinking over the years, Papa Bear is just really dumb. He's kind of a doofus. Every single episode of the Berenstain Bears, Papa is, is stupid and undisciplined and... Uh, he's, he's just, he's doofus. That's a great word. And mama bear is always smart and always has the right answer. And the kids always respect her and they just kind of roll their eyes at dad. Yep. Yep. And a lot of us grew up with that. And over the years, we've started to notice that same kind of thing about men and fathers has crept into a lot of media. Oh yeah. It's like uh, every TV show seems to... The, the father figure is, is kind of the, the dumb goof, which I like to be a goof, but I don't think I'm dumb. No, no. And there's a big difference. Yeah. I think part of, part of the purpose of fatherhood is to teach your kids how to be goofy and then how to settle down and be disciplined and sure. go to bed or whatever. Because dad, dad is always the one that gets the kids riled up before bedtime, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then dad's the one, hopefully, who says, all right. Now it's time to settle down. So we wanted to just have some real talk yes. about being a man. Uh, we'll spend some time talking about being a father. Um, so just follow along with us and uh, we'll just we'll try to be real. As this program progresses, we hope that our listeners will um, send us some questions here at Steve Shetler Media. Uh, and we will answer your questions about manhood or life or fatherhood. We'll answer them as best as we can, but sometimes a man has to know when to say, I don't know. So if we don't know, we'll tell you, because this is real talk with Aaron and Steve. Not Keeping Aaron it and, real. Not Aaron and Steve make stuff up to sound smart, because <laughs> that's not happening anyway. I, I might. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being real. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Steve might really make stuff up, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'll let you know if I make things up. Huh? <laughs> okay. So I got, I've, I've been thinking about this for a little while. Um, what does it mean to be a man? Are you Does, asking me? Or are you um, just generally putting it out there? I'm putting it out there. Okay. And I've, I've thought of a couple of things. I saw a meme on the internet that I thought was probably pretty reliable. Okay. It said... Uh, <laughs> Alpha males drink beer and eat wings at Hooters, <laughs> while beta males nibble tapas and uh, w- with their wife at Italian cafes. <laughs> that I will, see. I'm clearly a beta male. <laughs> clearly a beta male. I think Steve probably is too. Or do you go to Hooters quite a bit? You know, I've been to Hooters maybe once in my life. I just find it uncomfortable. <laughs> Thanks for being it's awkward. Real. Thanks for being real <laughs> with me, Steve. Um, so Steve and I are a pair of confirmed beta males, I guess. <laughs> uh, I can I can think of another a number of other episodes in my life where I felt like a beta male. Um, I'm not a mechanical guy, 
My father-in-law um, at Dickel Construction in Frytown, Iowa, if you need dirt moved, the guy is Michelangelo with a bulldozer. <laughs> and he asked me to, to come work with him a couple of times. And first I tried driving a bulldozer. And if you've never been on a bulldozer before, that is, that is not easy. I, I, I'm just intimidated thinking about yeah. it. <laughs> if, if, you, if you lower the blade just a little too much, it bites into the dirt and, and it sucks the bulldozer down in. Yeah. And then you overreact and you pull up too much and raise the blade too high and then you're not moving any dirt at all. So then you lower the blade and, and I'm, I'm making waves in the dirt. And so that didn't seem to be a good fit. So he put me on the excavator and that didn't go very well. So he put me on the tractor and you just pull this big roller around behind you on a tractor mm -hmm. to smash down the dirt. Okay. That's a technical term, dirt smashing. <laughs> so you do the dirt smashing and in an hour, I got the tractor stuck about three times. Okay. And that was the end of my earth moving <laughs> career. I'm glad to say it wasn't the end of my relationship with my father-in-law. He was very, very gracious, but he didn't ask me to come back and work for him again. Yeah. So earth, machines. Yeah. Manly. It, yeah. But yeah. I'm right there with you because, uh, you know, growing up, my dad uh, was a very handy guy. You know, I talked about that at his funeral earlier this year. Um yeah, dad could fix anything. If we needed something fixed at Stacy and I's house here, we'd call him. Um, I did not pick up on that trait. Uh, he always had his tool bag. Everything was, you know, precisely put in there. Uh, he had everything you needed. I did not. I just, I have the very basics. I have like a ladder, a hammer, a screwdriver, and that's about it. But dad was good with... Uh, electric, you know, electricity, electric stuff, because he worked for Alliant and was a lineman and, and could do about anything that that way. And uh, I just did not pick up on that. My dad changed the oil in our car, did some slightly more complicated uh, repairs at times, and I never got into that. In fact, and this is probably my most embarrassing automotive story of all time, uh, one time, and this was, uh, we were just had two kids early on in our marriage, not a lot of income, actually almost like it was, it was bad. Money yeah, was yeah. real tight. And uh, a family friend gave us a van. So that was a huge relief. We had a vehicle that we could haul the kids around in. And then one day I went out to the garage and put the key in the ignition, tried to start the van. Nothing happened. No were, 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 were. Oh. Hey, that was good, wasn't <laughs> that was good, it? That, that was a good one. <laughs> that was pretty All manly. Right. Uh, n nothing. And my heart just sinks, you know, I'm yeah. like, what's this going to cost? Two, yeah. three, four, five hundred dollars. I don't even know. Does this mean a whole new van? So I go in and I tell Melissa, uh, I, the van is not starting. So she hangs her head. She's, she's going, oh, no, what are we going to do? How are we going to pay yeah. for this? What's wrong? I think usually when a van doesn't start, that's a transmission problem, right? Could be. Or, or the... <laughs> we have two people that don't know cars or mechanics talking yeah. about cars and mechanics. So, so at just that moment, my good friend Garrett came by. And, uh, and Garrett had, first of all, he worked in an automotive shop in high school. Okay. Um, when, when the mechanic found out that Garrett had taken apart an engine and put it back together again. So he worked automotive all the way through high school, went into the air force, worked on multi-million dollar, uh, jets. And so he just so happens to stop by okay. and I said, Garrett, my van won't start. Would, would you go look at it? So I handed him the key. And he runs outside to the garage and he's back in less than a minute. Yep. <laughs> and you know what he says. He goes, it fired right up, Aaron. <laughs> okay. How'd you fix it? Did you turn in your man card at that time? I, yeah. <laughs> so Garrett says, well, Aaron, I put the gear shift selector in park. 
<laughs> so, so was it in drive or something? It, or yeah, like it was. It was in drive or neutral, and yeah. and apparently that's so. It was a very Oops. cheap fix, cheap yeah. on the pocketbook. Yeah, but humiliating. Yeah, and I just wonder how many other guys feel that. Um, maybe you don't drive a truck, you don't own and shoot guns, you don't drink a lot of beer, uh, you don't. You know, when the guys are eating spicy wings, you're like, could I have some more ranch, please? <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe just honey barbecue flavor on my wings. And all the other guys are sweating from the, yeah. the spice of their North <laughs> Carolina Reaper peppers. <laughs> yeah. So. So, yeah, what what defines your manliness? Well, I turned the tables on you there. I, I took over <laughs> and I asked the question. How do you like that? Uh, that, yeah. I've come to a pretty simple definition of manhood. Okay. Watch. People get in trouble for this, Aaron. People get in trouble for this. <laughs> um, and, and this may seem old fashioned, Steve. Yeah. But I think, I think it's probably scientific. What yep. parts do you have? <laughs> what part? What parts are in your engine? If <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to do a full-length <laughs> biology lesson here, friends, but what parts do you have? And if you've got the man parts, you're a man. That makes sense to me. And now we can stop worrying about, uh, you know, do I burp enough? Uh, <laughs> I do, <laughs> by the way. I make up for a, a few people, probably. Do, do I watch enough sports? Do I know all the players on the Hawkeye team? Um, just all of these things that we get caught in the trap, I think, of comparing ourselves with other men. And instead of just being confident and relaxed and saying, I'm a man. Now, how am I going to get on with my life? Where do I mm -hmm. go from here? We can all just settle down and say, I'm a man. And now I'm going to do something with my life. And I'm going to do something about it. And I may not be like that man over there. I may not. Oh, oh, I was, I was disappointed. What, when was it that beards came back in? <laughs> it's been several years now. It's, yeah. But, but it's, uh, nobody had beards when I was a kid. Yeah. N nobody. Correct. Um, yeah. But now beards are back in. And, ah, oh, man, we're just spilling all of our secrets. When I was in high school and I would try to grow a beard, my little sister would call me Patches. <laughs> a little here. Cause it, yeah, a little here, a little there. And uh, so I've never seriously tried to grow a beard since. And now all these... But see, there I go. I'm just comparing myself yeah, yeah. with other men. You can't grow a Duck Dynasty type of beard? Why did you have to bring up Duck Dynasty? <laughs> now I have more shame, Steve. I can't grow a good beard either. It kind of fizzles out right through right here. Right about there. So you, you keep the, keep the I just nicely keep, yeah. trimmed. <laughs> so there's enough TV shows and advertisements and Berenstain Bear books <laughs> kicking us men down. Um, why don't we support each other? Yeah. Why, yeah. Don't we, why don't we accept who we are, quit comparing, and, and move on? Yeah. No, I get that. And I, I think this should this would be a great place for us to also pause and say this has absolutely nothing to do with are men better than women, are women better than men. That's nonsense. Yeah. We're better together. Men and women are better together. Uh, but it probably wouldn't be cool if Steve and I came on here and told women how to be. So <laughs> You'd be here by yourself. <laughs> I'd be like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to talk about man stuff. All right. I think we're going to wrap this segment up okay, at this point. Um, but again, we if you've got questions about what does it mean to be a man, how do I be a better man? Because that's a good question. Uh, how do I navigate relationships with my daughters? Steve's got a daughter. Yep. I've got three daughters. Maybe somebody's asking, how do I keep all the long hair out of my house? <laughs> and what's the answer, Steve? Uh Get some for the shower. You get Drano, and you just dump the Drano. Oh, you had a solution. See, he he knows how to be a plumber because he's manly. 
No, I, I was going to say. I don't know. You, you don't. No, there is, got, there is no keeping. Yeah, the long hair just is just there. When you have a wife and three daughters, there's just going to be a lot of long hair in the house. Yes. Um, so, yeah, whatever your questions are, uh, let us know. We'll answer them. Put with, them in the comments below this video if you want. Or you can also email Media at gmail.com. All right. And we'll get to it. So is that it? That's it for We're this wrapping segment. it up. We're wrapping it up for this time. We'll be back in a week at this same time. Uh, you've got Real Talk with Aaron and Steve here on Steve Shetler Media. Aaron, it's been fun. Let's do this again. All right.